Happy are thy men. Happy are thy servants. We have to understand that when we're talking about joy, we're talking not exactly about a byproduct, but about something that comes as a result of something else, right? Uh, there are people who are chasing after happiness. It's called the pursuit of happiness. Happiness isn't something you can run after and grab, you see. Happiness sneaks up on you when you're doing the will of God. As we, as we read through the scripture, we discover that God intends his people to be happy people. And we ought to be. Of all men, we ought to be happy. You remember when the Queen of Sheba came from halfway across the ancient world, traveling a thousand miles across desert country with no air conditioner. She arrives in the city of Jerusalem, and one of her impressions of the city, she says, Happy are thy men. Happy are thy servants. Uh, she noticed that right away. And that's what people ought to notice about us. Are we happy people? Are we as miserable as everybody else is? If we are, well then, why should they even listen to us? What do we have to offer them? It ought to be something that they notice when they come and they say, the half hasn't been told me. Happy are God's people. Happy are his servants. It's, it's a happy thing to serve God. He's a good master. He's not a hard master. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. His commands are not grievous. And if we make it out to be like that, we don't understand him aright. Because he's the happy God. He's the blessed God, and he wants his people to be happy people. Now, by that I don't mean uh, what I sometimes refer to as dry tooth Christians, you know? We're not talking about people always going around grinning all the time. We might define joy very simply as the, uh, the shock absorbers and the bumpy road of life. Now, if I get a new car, I don't say to you, hey, come on out and see my shock absorbers. The, the shock absorbers, they're not the most important part of the car to me. I don't show them off. But you'll know if they're not working. You could take a car on a bumpy road. If the shock absorber, you've driven behind a car where the shock absorbers don't work. You know what happens? They never get over it. <laughs> they, they, they don't stop bouncing until they hit the next bump. And then they start all over again. And they just don't get over it. Now, that's, that's how we are in the world. People in the world just don't get over it. They grieve and they can't get over it. But the child of God has a hidden resource that nobody really notices and they don't quite know how it works. But when we hit the hard bumps of life, there's something there that takes the jar out of them. Oh, we still hit the bumps like anyone else. And it still hurts as much. But there's something about it. As the scripture says, we sorrow, but not as others who have no hope. And there is, a, there is a resource that God has given to his people to help us get over it. To help us to endure, to bear up under the hard times of life. And this is what marks out the people of God in every era. That we're able, by this hidden resource, not ours, but a fruit of the Spirit in our lives that produces that, that insulation that saves us from being overwhelmed by the hardness of the road of life.